Tenosa is uh, here in Gauteng, is briefing the media on its program of action on the non-payment of nurses for three months. Let's take you live to that media briefing now. Processed in a meeting at CISO Hospital where the HOD, the CFO, were present. And we all agreed that these recommendations would be implemented and that the department would go and look for the further uh, um, money which would be utilized to employ the 84 professional nurses, uh, which is there, which was just over 30 million. But to our surprise, the department did not implement this as agreed. They then decided to postpone this issue and therefore also affecting those nurses who had just uh, uh, commenced their community service, uh, which is uh, when we talk about nurses that have not been paid, it is those who have completed community service. It is also the cohort of those who have just uh, started their community service. So this is the report that we invite you uh, to ask the department why it did not implement this report, which... Uh, they were participants uh, in terms of uh, the work that was done. So we believe that uh, if you look at the issue of the EPWP uh, 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 workers that are in the department, there was no hesitation in terms of ensuring that those ones, their contract is extended for another year. But when it comes to the core staff that is doing the mandate, or that is discharging the mandate of the Department of Health, we are then faced with stories. We must also put on record that yesterday we were called into a meeting with the Department of Health where they demonstrated to us, uh, where they were trying to demonstrate to us that uh, they are committed in terms of uh, ensuring that these payments are done. And this was only because of the stance that we had taken. So this clearly shows you that we've got a Department of Health that relaxes and that does not take nurses seriously. And to this end, uh, if you look in other provinces, nurses were paid their nursing, uh, their uniform allowance. Only in Gauteng, they were not paid uh, their uniform allowance. And they only recently got paid now on the 30th, whereas others were paid as far back as April and May. So this clearly tells you that we are dealing with a Department of Health that does not take serious uh, the plight of nurses within uh, the Department of Health. Uh, as things stand, we are concerned that these nurses who have just joined the profession, who are young, uh, who are black, uh, will be left with a bitter taste in their mouth, uh, not uh, you know, feeling not appreciated by the employer. They are not finding value in working for the Department of Health, and that is why we have taken this stance. Our program of action, which we will be doing, we will be visiting the Premier of the province. We are going to mobilize to visit the Premier of the province. We will also be visiting Treasury in the province uh, because we believe that Treasury must also allocate enough funds uh, for the Department of Health in order to meet its mandate. We will also be visiting the Department of Health demanding that uh, the current CFO, Lerato Macho, has got to face the consequences and also be held liable for these nurses that have not gotten paid because this also rests with her office in that she has been present in all the meetings that we have held with the Department of Health where she has also be, been on record saying that finances are not a crisis in the Department of Health as far as paying of these nurses is concerned. So we will be mobilizing throughout and uh, on Tuesday we will be making an announcement as to when We'll be visiting the Department of Health uh, after our, our campaigns committee has met and has prepared the necessary logistics. So uh, we will be inviting all the nurses in this province because this is not about the nurses that have not been paid, the post-community service nurses. This is about defending the dignity of the nursing profession. So all the nurses in Gauteng, we will be calling them and taking to the streets to demonstrate that we are tired of talking in the boardroom and agreeing on things in the boardroom. At the end of the day, those decisions that we have taken in the boardrooms are not being honored by the department. We have also indicated to the department that from where we are sitting, uh, we do not fully trust the department, and that is why we are taking this stance that we are taking uh, today. And therefore, we are calling on all the nurses in this province uh, 
regardless of their nursing affiliation to, for them to stand up so that we can be able to defend the dignity of nursing in Gauteng. So we'll be engaging all those stakeholders to ensure that uh, we take the fight to the doorstep of the Premier, we take the fight to the doorstep of Gauteng e-governance or finance, uh, which is led by MEC Nomandu. We'll also be taking the fight to the uh, Department of Health uh, under the leadership of Dr. Mkhit. So we will be uh, going on the ground to, to motivate and or to mobilize our people that uh, we must go out there because if we leave things to be as they are, we are going to be faced with a situation where the citizens of Gauteng would be worse off if we were to face another uh, 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 you know, pandemic. So research also tells us that uh, you know, countries that are well developed, that are well resourced, are at this present moment, you know, poaching healthcare workers from underdeveloped countries. And what is going to happen is that should we face another pandemic, we'll be faced with a bigger problem in that we'll not be able to respond adequately uh, to the pandemic that uh, we'll be facing. So that is the stance that we are taking. Uh, we are calling on all nurses to go and uh, ready themselves. Uh, we'll be going, uh, taking the government head on in this province. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. I think, uh, another thing that we just need to highlight and just to add to what the Chairperson has said, this also includes the cohort of uh, COVID-19 contract workers. We know that uh, as at the, at the beginning of COVID, there was a shortage. It was highlighted that there is a shortage of nurses and it was acknowledged by the Department. And as such, uh, the employed nurses on contract and other employees but those employees, particularly nurses, have since been let go by the Department of Health. And this also putting a lot more strain on the current uh, employees who are left in the department. So you've got a uh, Department of Health that decides to retrench nurses and keep other category nurses. And yet the burden of health in this uh, province, not only in this province, the burden of health in the Department of Health lies particularly with nurses. Because without nurses, the, 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 the nursing, uh, the healthcare service will definitely collapse, comrades, uh, colleagues. And <clears throat> another thing that we would want to add just before we take a, a round of questions would be to say that the numbers that we are talking about here, the chairperson indicated that the number of the post com cells was about 700, or just over 700, including the current community service nurses, we're looking at more than 1,000 nurses that had been affected by this whole thing. And there should be uh, some form of consequence management. Somebody needs to be held to account. It cannot be business as usual, and yet people have stayed for three months without being paid. And so therefore, the department needs to say that what are they uh, going to do about that? Who is going to be held to account? And then with that said, I think uh, we'd like to take questions. And yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Any questions? Um, yes, Dubai uh, Mkhlavi from New Zoom um, Africa. So you, you're calling on all nurses, um, regardless of union affiliation, to join uh, your mass action. How will the mass action be rolled out? I know that nurses are seen as essential services. Uh, so there are certain guidelines or rules governing um, that there should be a minimum number of them stationed behind at healthcare facilities, etc. Are you calling on them also to come out? Uh, will this effectively not collapse healthcare? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yes. Second question. Yeah, but also uh, it's, my question is related to Dumaule. Uh, <coughs> is this your first call? <coughs> one that you're making publicly now. Have you engaged your counterparts formally to say this is a crisis that? as you say, if not addressed, the world end up collapsing the entire health system because I guess their members will also be affected. Um, have you been in touch with Nahal, for instance, to join for this year? So, my name is Malou. Okay. No, okay. Okay. Well, thanks, John. Yeah, no, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, we, one thing that we must put out there is that uh, we are a responsible organization that appreciates that South Africans have got uh, the right to access healthcare service. 
This call that we are making is about restoring the dignity uh, of nursing and ensuring that those who are in positions of authority must understand that nursing is very much important to the well-being of the Department of Health and that uh, if they continue on this path that they are doing, they are effectively collapsing the you know, the healthcare system in this country, the healthcare system in this province. So the call that we're making is 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 is, is in line uh, with ensuring that we restore the dignity of, of nursing. So one thing we can assure South Africans is that uh, uh, them accessing healthcare service will not be affected. Uh, what we are trying to do here is to hold to account those who are uh, in charge of, of government. And, and, and in charge of the Department of Health. So we are uh, placing on the back of our minds and we are very much aware that the kind of service that we offer to South Africans is a service that is also located in the constitution of this country and that South Africans have got to have access to health care. But also as we balance that right, we must also venture into balancing the right of uh, health care workers as workers in that they also have you know, uh, accorded certain rights as workers in this country. So we will uh, accommodate uh, South Africans because our fight here is not directed at South Africans. In fact, we also encourage South Africans who are health activists and who care about the health uh, system in this country to come and join us. We'll also engage other unions uh, that are not necessarily in the health space because this is about ensuring that the rights of workers is protected. Now, uh, you are asking a question, uh, Muluk, about the about engaging our counterparts. Well, uh, this is a shared battle that even our counterparts, uh, we in terms of our engagements, we have been, uh, you know, talking to say that we need to restore the dignity of nursing in this province. We need to challenge, uh, you know, the Department of Health. So. We do have meetings, we have had uh, engagements with Nehau in this regard, and we have also characterized uh, this problem uh, with Nehau to say that uh, this is not a problem of the Department of Health alone. That is why we are saying that we will also be going to Treasure. So, yes, we did uh, engage our counterparts, and this is not the first call that uh, we have made. We have been working with our counterparts in terms of trying to persuade the Department of Health to do what is right. So. Uh, I, I trust that I've answered your, your question. That we have, uh, we have uh, I've been, I've been personally talking with the provincial secretary uh, of of Nehau, Comrade Mzigai Sechonji. We have also had a bilateral between the provincial office bearers of Dinosa and the provincial office bearers of Nehau, where we're talking on this challenge. So there, there are uh, engagements between us and our counterparts. So I think, uh, is is there any follow up? Yeah. The, the this ongoing unhappiness on the side of nurses, how is that impacting on the services that uh, they ought to be providing to the people of Houding? And I understand that uh, this is a second question. I understand that there was a meeting yesterday between you and management. What did you agree upon, or what did you disagree on? Well, uh, well uh, this ongoing unhappiness, uh, to some extent, um, you know, it, it, it has been affecting uh, services in other aspects. For instance, uh, if you talk about the vaccination program that, we, that was driven by government, you find that uh, the risk that was there is that nurses who were providing services, you know, ordinary services to those who are going to the, our clinics, going to our community health care centers, were being moved from their usual, uh, you know, uh, uh, workplaces to go and drive the vaccination campaign. And you find that those patients who are on chronic uh, illnesses who go for their checkups in clinic would end up spending a lot of time, you know, queuing because there has been a reduction in the number of uh, nurses that uh, were providing services to make sure that uh, you know services run quicker. So we have had uh, that uh, uh, you know the focus being mainly on COVID. It affected also 
those who, who have other uh, chronic conditions such as your diabetes, hypertension, who go for regular checkup in clinics. So, <clears throat> and, and also our members have been telling us that in some instances being shifted from their usual points uh, where they work, uh, you find that they are frustrated as far as transport is concerned, safety is concerned, because they would go and do vaccination drives, you know, in many areas as, as opposed to doing, you know, reporting to their regular points of service. So there has been, uh, you know, some impact that has been there. Um, in terms of the engagements that we have had with the department uh, yesterday, the department uh, has committed to us that uh, these nurses that have not uh, been paid will be paid uh, by Thursday, uh, this coming Thursday. Uh, but we have indicated to the, to the department that we are not going to applaud them for that because they are doing what they ought to have done in the past. So the department was essentially saying to us that they want to restore the relationship that we have with them uh, to also ensure that uh, there's a trust, you know, there's a trust relationship between us and them. We indicated, we put it on record to them that from where we're sitting, we can only trust them as and when those nurses can confirm that they, they've received money in their bank accounts. And we've also indicated to them that between the 29th and yesterday, if they could achieve ensuring that uh, they collect the data, they are able to ensure that uh, they submit to ECAF so that these nurses can be paid. What was stopping them all along? You know, these are some of the things that we indicated to the department that uh, we appreciate uh, them trying to manage the situation because we can say that the meeting of yesterday was informed by the fact that there was panic about today's briefing to say uh, we should uh, tone down and, uh, in terms of uh, how we deal with issues. So we have engaged them and we will continue engaging the department at any moment because our mandate and, and our loyalty is towards our members. So we'll always engage them as long as the, the, the outcomes of those meetings will be improving the lives of, of our members, ensuring that our members uh, get what is due to them. But also one thing that we've put to the department is that uh, much as these salaries will be paid, we've challenged the department uh, for consequence management to say that uh, what will happen to those uh, that have, have, you know, have slept on the job uh, that have, uh, you know, uh, which has led to these workers not getting their salaries. I think uh, <clears throat> as we asked about uh, the effects, one more thing that, uh, we, that, that we know that has come to our attention is that the department, uh, ever since the termination of those COVID-19 contracts, and even with the current cohort of, of nurses, has been spending more money on HNC nursing. Now, if the department can afford to get HNC nurses in there, it means that there is money to pay uh, the current uh, cohort of employees who have not been paid. So the reason would be why are they not paying them? Because if you are able to get more people and pay them from an HNC nursing budget, then you should be able to pay the employees that you have. And why are you terminating people if you are still going to be using HNC nurses? It indicates as well that there is a shortage of nurses. The fact that you've got a shortage of nurses but you are letting others go does not make sense at all. Yeah. Thanks. <coughs> yeah. The simplify, <coughs> sorry, simplify for us this agency nurses. Uh, uh, but basically what happens with agency nursing is that the, what we call H, uh, nursing agencies which are contracted. So nurses who are employed by those agencies would then be called by the department to come and work at a particular institution or in a particular ward because there is a shortage of staff in that, in that institution. So then the department then pays the agent, then the agent pays the agency, then the agency pays the nurse. And when the money gets to the nurse, it's no longer the original amount that the department had paid to that particular agency, it's less. In fact, uh, to simplify it, uh, look at nursing agencies like labor brokers. Yes. They go and uh, you, you give them your CVs and everything. We are employed somewhere on a full-time basis. They go get contracted by a hospital to say that when the hospital is experiencing a shortage, they call the agents to supply them uh, with nurses. So if you look at that, that is a clear evidence to say that there is a shortage of nurses in the public sector. So it doesn't make sense that if you can afford to pay agencies, why not employ the people that you have trained using taxpayers' money.
Because these nurses we are talking about were trained and they were funded by government. But at the end of the day, they are not employed by the same government, which is wasteful expenditure. And the people who are benefiting from this unfortunate situation is the private healthcare groups. Because they get nurses who are already trained, who are competent, trained by government, and they get to benefit. Also other countries, we know the UK, we know uh, the Middle East, they are actively recruiting in South Africa. We've got many young nurses, people that we ourselves have gone to school with, who are working abroad. And uh, if you talk about the principle of patriotism, uh, if you ask me why I'm still in this country, I mean, uh, it is South Africans who are, who are taxpayers who have paid for my education. That is why some of us remain in this country. But because of the frustration, you then find people being driven to go and work and seek greener pastures outside uh, the country. So that is why we keep on saying that it seems as if these challenges are more glaring when it comes to the nursing professions. If you look at other sectors within health, you don't experience such challenges. We know that we're beginning to experience them with doctors, but not so much as in nursing. So that tells you that the nursing profession is not taken serious by the Department of Health. Thank you. One last question from my side. <clears throat> Why haven't you approached the courts? Uh, because supposedly a court order, if you happen to win that litigation, would be more compelling. And I'm just saying, you now resorting to take into the streets, and as much as you are committing that South Africans will continue to access the healthcare services, uh, I guess if, I, if, if, if a clinic or a hospital is, public hospital is the only place I can go to, this is not going to give me assurance that you will go on a demonstration and still be able to provide the service. Why are you not considering the courts? Well, uh, part of the documents that we have given you is the different contracts that have been uh, given to these students. And we have submitted those contracts uh, to our own uh, uh, you know, legal uh, people so that we can be able to, one, uh, get a proper legal opinion and also be able to approach the court. So that, that, that action is underway. But also, what is important is that, uh, you know, when you go to court, you go to court, when you approach the court, uh, it, it, you, you do not necessarily, you know, attract some of the attention you would want to attract. So what we are trying to do also as we embark on the action is to also demonstrate to South Africans that they too themselves have got a responsibility of holding the government accountable. So we'll be exploring every available avenue. We will be going to court with the contracts uh, that we've provided to you uh, as part of the, of, of the documents that we've given you to say that when we make these, uh, you know, when we, we make these calls that we make, we're not thumb sucking. It's because these things have been promised to these nurses by the same government through a contract. And the unfortunate part, Mluk, is that when a nurse finishes studying and does community service and wants to be released from the contract that they signed with government, government activates you know, punitive measures in that they will tell the nurse that you owe us. You can't just we train you and then you leave. You owe us. And we have seen many nurses whose money, who have had to pay the department money back for, for, for wanting to be released from the contracts. But now, when government cannot fulfill their contractual obligations, we don't see uh, you know, the same kind of approach taking place. So that is part of the reason why we're also approaching the course to give us you know, a recourse in this regard on that matter. Yes. Just a follow-up on the question. Is um, the approach of the courts going to be a blanket approach for other provinces nationally, or is it just going to be centered around how they also, in terms of your plan of action, is it mainly a provincial thing in terms of uh, the NASA, or is this uh, going to be a national program? Well, uh, there are two aspects uh, to this issue. The first aspect is that there's what you call community service, which is mandatory by law, that after your four years of training, you must go and, be, and do what we call community service. 
uh, and after you have completed that 12 months of community service, you then get your certificate which gives you now the right of uh, being a, a, a fully fledged registered nurse. This community service was started in 2007, before it did not exist. It was started in 2007. So part of the, you know, the, the, the solutions we are putting on the table, we are considering, is to say that maybe the issue of community service must be repealed because you get nurses now who are allocated, who must do community service in public health facilities. And uh, because there's no other option available to them, they must do this community service in order for them to get their full qualifications. Mm. They then find themselves rendering services but not getting paid by the, by the government. Now we're saying that if we take away this community service, then probably a nurse who comes from university or college would have the option now of seeking employment elsewhere without being you know, held down by this community service. That's the first part, that, uh, uh, which is a national question uh, which we want to address. The second part is that these provinces, uh, they implement different approaches as far as the funding of nursing is concerned. So in this regard, it is for those who are here in, in, in Gauteng province, but also it's got a, you know, a, a transversal effect in that moving from the PESAL system to the PASAR system, it has now made, uh, you know, standardized the funding in the country. So this, this our approach, ours approaching the court will also compel government, you know, in the entire uh, country to say that they must employ uh, these nurses. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. In the absence of any other questions, uh, that concludes uh, our okay, Actually, uh, we haven't had the voice of the Treasure <laughs> Rose. Considering what so she not controls the pace, I, I don't know, as the union, you always get accused at times, I'm just saying generally, not specifically you as Dinoza. You get to be accused of living large um, <laughs> at the contributions of the workers. And during times like this, when, um, or for instance, when workers go on strike, sometimes there's no income whatsoever. From, from your point of view as treasurer, as the union, uh, have you been able to succeed? successfully perhaps try to fundraise for this concert students so that they can get going when the department doesn't pay them. Okay, thank you. Firstly, the is an NPO. So whatever we, we the, the amount of the money which we get is subscription and the obvious donation from the legal or, or, or approved uh, institutions. So, so far, as Dinosa, we didn't do much, to be honest, to say we have fundraised other funds. The only thing which we were doing was a moral support to them. And at some point, we were calling to say, if ever you are failing to go to work, you do not have to go. And we're there to represent them for not being at work. So those were some of the things which we were doing. As like I said, as an NPO, there are certain things we can do, certain things we cannot do. So taking the subscription of others and funding others, that's not what is allowed. However, we will continue to support as what we are doing now. And on the issue of uh, unions or trade unions living large, as the also we are not one of them, we account for each and every cent which we spend. And as an accounting officer, like <laughs> if needs comes and when the audit needs to be done, we always get audited and so far it's a clean audit. Simple say we account for everything which we do. We do not live large. I think you, you can see by some of the things outside. We do not live large. We respect the contribution of members, which are contributing, <laughs> <laughs> and we're just mm. driving a normal car, just like yours. So, <laughs> so yeah, there's no such with, with us. We, yeah. we try to to respect and and look after our, uh, the, the sub subscription of our members. Mm. And uh, <laughs> maybe because of laws, uh, look, uh, you know, subscriptions that you collect, even in our constitution. Nursing union at Denosa concerned about uh, the non-payment of nurses saying it's going to take uh, its uh, concerns to the doorstep of the Premier 
of uh, the province uh, here in Gauteng, uh, saying that uh, it's quite concerned that this has been going on uh, for what we understand is uh, three months uh, at this uh, time, and uh, basically saying that uh, they want answers uh, regarding why these payments have not been made. That's all we're going to have to leave.